the Lord and we greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are so elated that you have chosen to spend your Sunday worship experience with us. On behalf of our pastor and first lady, the ministers and members of Beulah Refuge Tabernacle and First Refuge of Barnwell, we say welcome. Service will begin momentarily. We invite you to like and share this live stream service at this time. We also invite you to be active in the comments to give praises to our Lord, encouraging to the worship leaders and the man of God as he brings forth the word on this morning.
command of God's word. Let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. Amen. We certainly bless the Lord today and be magnified and exalt his wonderful name, Lord Jesus Christ. And thank God. Amen. And I know him. But more importantly, thank God he knows who I am. Amen. Amen. I bless him. And I praise him that he's the Savior oh, of my soul. Oh, he delivered me yeah. from the bondage of sin and translated me into the kingdom of his dear son. And I bless God that they praise his glorious name. We certainly thank God for him blessing us and enabling us to assemble again. Amen. In this place of worship. We certainly want to give honor to all of our ministerial running in the absence of our Sister Pastor L. Chelsea Mack to our Sister Pastor L. Willisie Hampton, who is our speaker for the morning. Amen. Amen. To all of our teachers, mothers, amen. Our church mother, Mother Dunning, to our first leadership, Mother Smith, and to all God's wonderful people that are here. Those of you that may be viewing us on Facebook or on the internet, I am it. It is that you may be viewing us. We thank God for you in all this Lord's day joining us in worship. Thank God for our praise day. Amen. For the beautiful song of worship. Amen. We certainly praise God for our musicians. Tables out of that young on Friday night. 
Let's see here. I'm going to give them credit where credit is due. They got a bunch of teams that they go back to United. And I'm going to tell you, Frank and, and Sean just took some tables out of that building on Friday night. And I thank God for him and Timothy. Those and Frank, Gary, those young boys. This is how they just labor alongside their fathers and them on Friday. And we certainly bless the Lord and praise God for them in a very special way. And just thank God overall for the wonderful job. Amen. That everyone good did. And I want to let you know how much I appreciate our sister Latasha Benjamin. Amen. Seeing that everything was open here at the church and on time and, and ready. Amen. For our women to come in and have their meetings. And just I deeply appreciate it so very much in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We want to thank God for your celebrating. Amen. Our shepherd mother spent on her birthday and blessing her all throughout the night. Just what a wonderful time. And then I want to give our special praise. Amen. For our mother birthday girl of the month. Amen. Our sister Zuri. Amen. Zuri celebrated her 12th birthday on Thursday. Amen. We are so blessed. Thank God. Amen. For her birthday celebration. She said, Amen. Just as a plate home to me yesterday. I couldn't go to the celebration, but Amen. She and sister, her mom set up again a good plate home to me, and I enjoyed it. And we certainly bless the Lord. Amen. For all of you, and just thank God for the wonderful, warm fellowship. Amen. Among the people of God. And we praise God for all of you. And uh, at this time, we want to get ready amen, to receive our tithe and our offerings. And we're going to ask our sister Benjamin to come and give you our offertory directions. Sister Benjamin. We're going to ask Father Benjamin if he wouldn't come down and greet the saints as they come with their gifts. Amen. Let us look to the Lord. Gracious and eternal God, our Father, we bless you now. We give your name the praise, the honor, and glory. We thank you for your goodness and your kindness. Thank you, Lord, for being the God of provision. You are indeed Jehovah God. You see and you provide. And we thank you. And now, Father, your people come to give a portion of what you have provided for them of your coffers for them. I pray your blessings upon them, Lord, that they will give with a joyful and cheerful heart, knowing that the Lord loveth the cheerful giver. Bless now, Father, both the gift and the giver, and we'll magnify and exalt We ask now in Jesus' name, amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. What a blessing it is amen, to be able to work in the kingdom of the Lord. Amen. And they know you're working when you got your musicians. Amen. Heaven with chairs and putting up tables. Amen. As our brother Jonathan was. Amen. And all, amen. All of them. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we just happy. God bless you. Amen. In the wonderful name of Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. We thank God for being here on this morning for his goodness and his mercy that he has shown to water. Yes, Lord. Amen. Yes, amen. All that is done and all that God is going to do for us. Don't forget on this afternoon after service, I hope you're ready with your phones and your iPads and everything. 
for questions is our tech class on this afternoon after service with our sister Denise Stetson on today, directly after service. Don't forget on um, this Wednesday is Sisters in Prayer at 6 30 p.m. in the morning, and missionary service is at 7 30 p.m. Amen. We have an invitation, praise God, from Monk's Corner Church of our Lord Jesus Christ. On today at 5 p.m., they're celebrating the appreciation there for our elder and mother today. Also, don't our El Macklemore drive through our service appreciation on today from 3.30 until 5 also on today. Remember to pray one for another. We pray for our um, sister Maggie Benjamin's grandson, our brother Jalon Benjamin. Remember him in our prayers. Also remember to pray for all of those that are sick and shut in. I pray for you and you pray for me. And we're going to watch God change things. Also, remember everyone, deacons, missionaries, ministers of deacon wives, deal, your credential monies are due. And then, credential monies are due. So please take care of that today or as soon as you can in Jesus' name. Our thought of the week, after all this is over, you're going to come out stronger than ever before. Pray for us in Jesus' Amen. name. And now selection. Safety. Are nobody like Jesus?
This sermon that I'm working on, I'm going to do it in two parts, part one and part two. So when I end it and cut off, you know there's more yet to come. You know, that sermon met. But I understand preaching, you just can't just get up there and do a two-man of God and preach. It didn't work that way. Paul was preaching a long time because a man dropped dead in the audience. The scripture said he was a long time. That's what he said. But Paul got on top of the Lord of Light and I kept on preaching. But we're going to do it. We invite your attention to the scripture. And we're going to start at St. Matthew, the 8th chapter, the 19th. Amen. 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 That's it, Matthew, the eighth chapter, nineteen to twenty-second verse. Just like I said, and I'm giving you the time of my part one. We're gonna be dealing with let the dead bury their dead. Let the dead bury their dead. And we're going to see how this ties into what the message is going to be as a whole. But I can't reach it until she reads. Does read. And a certain scribe came and said unto him, uh -huh. Master.
see what you want to see. But this scripture means just what it said. If he said, I have no way to lay my head, uh, he meant that. He gave all of his circumstances and whatnot. I said, sure, he had a version of that pillar. He had a, a, a copy of the middle house. But he could have gone back. Not quite sure uh, what the uh, 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 woman loved Jesus so much that he always be at the house all the time, Martha here. I'm quite sure he would give him a home, a place to stay. But no, thank you. He said, Fox and Bird have, and the birds are there. I said, I don't know what you ever see a bird fill a nest. Birds are filled a nest in some of the weirdest places. And I hate to destroy a bird nest. Then they get to the leading age and have a little baby. So that's more important. And I would take the nest sometime and move it in a safe place. And somehow or another, they must find that nest. Uh, so, so, so your basic need having a home is in your will. You need to get the food and ready. That means that you've got bread to eat and clothes to wear. Y'all will take you at a rest. And then, and then this is Fox and Sam Bowles. Uh, black folks, being in the military, most of these guys up in Vietnam were fighting. You have something called Fox holes. And Fox holes live in home. But the military is called Fox holes because it's a hiding place where they can get the ups on the enemy if they can watch that hole and they can do out there. Really get the picture. Fox holes. Fox have had holes. I've never seen a fox when running around the go somewhere. Everybody got a hole. This is what Jesus Christ said. Let a man have no one to live in. Now, this is another disciple. He was a disciple of Christ. Father of Christ. Like the old saying would say, easier said done. But I look at Jesus being poor. And have enough to give up everything. Everything. The old saying is, if I don't have, I don't have a daughter, a child who has his own. But nevertheless, you got to think about the urgent of the Lord. What Jesus Christ needed to do. What was his will? That's, that's the most important thing. Huh? And, 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 and here's another thing. Now, this is once in a lifetime call, a divine call. He said, Suffer me to go bury my father. And you would think that Jesus Christ would say, Okay, go take care of your business. But come on back. But Jesus didn't say that. Jesus said, Unto him, follow me, and let the dead bury their dead. Let your loved ones that are not saved, that don't have a relationship with Christ, let them take care of that. You follow me. Let the dead, and to understand the virgin of the world, when we say, he said, let the dead bury their dead. Yes. Two kinds of death. There's a physical death and there's a spiritual death. When you think about it, what happened to the first death? People like to talk about hell and not sin. 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 Sin came into the world through one man. Sin came into the world. Now, think about it. God gave him this be obedient. He had put him in God and put everything he did. He was not to what? To eat of that second tree. But what happened? When you doubt God and don't believe, that sin has consequences, you want to fool in yourself. Okay. And I was afraid that I would go back to my old lifestyle. 
And I would read scriptures in the Bible like, the man died for the, the food of the devil for 38 long, long years, and Jesus, he was in the cross and found him in the temple. What did Jesus Christ say to him? Go sin no more. That's a worse thing than this. Come upon you. And I started thinking, I said, now, uh, whatever he was doing, the Bible didn't say it. But whatever he was doing, sin is sin. But some sin, God just ain't gonna tolerate. He said, that's the worst thing that just happened to you. And I'm quite sure he knew what he was doing. And I thought about uh, this right here. Why do we gotta die? Why, why do we gotta die? Why can't we just enjoy life and have everything and be well and be healed? But it don't work that way. We got to die because what? Of sin. What happened to the first man that sinned? God said, I can probably like to read from this right quick. We talked about Genesis. And they talked about uh, what happened in, in that garden. Genesis, the second chapter. When you think about what is being said here in Genesis, the second chapter, and the seventh verse, look at this. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. Of the dust. Of the dust. You fall of the ground. Dust. And what? And he, and he the breath of life. The breath of life. A living soul. A living soul. Does got scripture to back up, but I got a lot of scripture language time. But you know what I'm talking about. It does you come and does you shall return. Because of sin. Of sin. So when you look at me and I look at you, that's all we are. Apart from the spirit, your body is nothing. But dust. And it's going back to dust. But the problem is, if you want to know all the things that are happening in the world and around us, and people praying for a better place, I'm going to ask you a question. If you were living next to a serial killer, and you know, know that you couldn't prove it, and you know something about that, something in that neighborhood of People just drop in bed, get up there after a certain person, show up. Smart, intelligent, but what? Possessed with the devil. Got a demon in him. Now, you wouldn't want nobody living in the around you like that. Right? No, you wouldn't. But, the thing about you, before you got saved, I think about me. Before I got saved, the Bible says it's a shame to even talk about those things which were done in the dark. Why? Because you were not a part of the problem. But now that you're born again, you're part of the solution to the problem. Everybody that's not born again that is not saved, they're part of the problem. Because what? They do evil things. But when you accept Christ, that means that what? Your, your spirit, your soul, become alive. You are not dead, you are alive. And wherever you go, read the scripture for me, where the, the scripture said, Jesus said, uh, uh, let the dead bury the dead. And you follow me, follow Jesus Christ. The devil don't want you to follow Jesus Christ. He don't want you to, 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 to allow that power in you to be able to overcome the darkness around you. Because of you being saved filled with the Holy Ghost, you know, a lot of things would happen in your neighborhood, but it can't happen because of your presence. So keep in mind, regardless of who you are in Christ Jesus, I know a lot of people get around a lot of crazy people. Sometimes I don't even open my mouth, but I know Christ in me. Certain things you just can't do. And I really believe that. But this man let me go. Mary 
the dead. The people that are dead, spiritually, physically. That's it. So we gotta get them before they die. But they can't see it. But you can see it. Before I got saved, I would look back over my life and see the people that I hurt. That if I was born again, never would have happened. I look at some people, even David, and all that kind of stuff. How sometimes we lie to each other. And then all of a sudden you broke up and she see you with somebody else. And it hurt so bad. Until she called you up and said, you know what? You better come over here and see me because I'm about to kill myself. That's the word for the devil. I mean, born again, living with my wife for 40 some years, it was never a time without even thought about it. Rather than I don't know her doing her wrong. Huh? Not that I fear her, but I fear the God that she served. That's in her. And I said, You are me. I do her wrong. God will take care of her. He will take care of me. But the thing that might happen to me may be greater than what I can bear. So he said, let the dead bury the dead. Every one of us in here right now, Christ is in us. If we were no longer in this place of all this earth, don't you know how much evil, how much evil taking our place? So don't ever, don't ever feel that if you are not out there knocking on doors and Witness to everybody in the path. Just think about this. The Holy Ghost. Lord is in me. Satan can't go so far. You be somebody living in the house right now with the devil trying to just take over. But you can't do it. Because if there's one person in that sea, the Holy Ghost, Christ can't walk the earth physically, but he's in you. He's in me. Watch the whole birds and rest of that in his head. You! You are his home. You are where he lives on this earth. You abide in me, and my word abide in you. Ask him for what you will. I'm talking about to let the dead bury the dead, and these people can't see it. Now, what if I have didn't get saved? How long do you think I was going to last? But some of the things that I was doing, some of the people I was around, having a good time. But don't realize, you know what I mean? He could have snapped me off just like that. Because I've been in the house of God. Mother Cloud filled with the Holy Ghost. I know what the word said. But yet I was out there. But I thank God. I have a praying in church. Praying mother. My mom was sitting in the house sometimes. I would go in and move through church, have my pistol in my pocket. And I would run everybody out of here. Because she would let them come in there all drunk, no place to stay. We get on the porch, cry like a baby. She better preach me. Tell me, leave her alone. It was the Holy Ghost in her trying to bring a conviction because it was in trouble. But I couldn't see it. But now I realize the way you can handle things. But I wasn't even no shit to have the way she had. After the 45 and a few rounds, you know what I mean? Gotta be taken care of. <laughs> but it don't work like that, huh? huh? But the weapon of our welfare is a nocturnal. Huh? The spiritual weapon that we have. Pull it down, stronghold. And everything. And exalt yourself with just the word and the knowledge of God. Everything. And I really believe that in my heart. Huh? Let the dead bury the dead. Huh? Huh? If people, you got some people preaching funerals and don't have a knife, a clue of where they're going. When they depart from here. You're going somewhere. Huh? Your body goes back to dust. But your spirit goes back to God. He breathes the breath of life. Become a living soul. So that spirit goes back to him to be judged. And you know enough down in the word to know that what? God wants you to be blessed. How hold, hold, and let he did that that you can become rich. But he did it. Not for himself, but for you. 
So I want you to keep in mind who you are. Who you are. No matter what kind of situation you get in, God has not given you the spirit of death. With a blood power and a sound mind. And when I was out there and said, dealing all the mixed up, I feel as though I had a pistol in my hand. I had the ups. I had the ups. But silly me didn't realize what if I had to die in my sin? The prophet of the son of he went away. Uh, and according to the scripture, uh, but he came back. The father said, This is my son. Was lost, but now found. But dead, but now he's alive. That means that the spirit in that young man had taken over. He lost everything. But when you, a follower of Christ, every time a person dies, a funeral, or whatever it is, you don't know, but that's a soul. That's a soul. That person's important in the eyes of God. He said, "Give no pleasure in the dying of the wicked. You don't have pleasure in that, but you are the only one that will make a difference. People got saved because of you. You probably will never know until you get to heaven. You'll never know, huh? Just your presence on your job. I heard the sing the song. Said, I want to live so God can use me anywhere, anytime. So you got that kind of attitude, but you, you, you are the light." That Christ is in you. That light will shine. It will burn up, cast out darkness. Sometimes people don't have to live here when they say he's filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, they talk about the power of the Peter. He just walked by and shattered. Those people were dying and were happy to get out of here. Knowing that what? They're going to a better place. I don't know what you're going to be doing when you get to heaven. Their rewards will be given out. Uh, where are you going to put you? I don't know, but I know one thing, huh? Uh, you're going to be, you talking about what kind of reward you get down here. Everybody's going to be for a monetary reward. But when you get to heaven, uh, there's still going to be some things going on. Your first trip, you get here, I understand Jesus Christ is coming back. You get some business because when the church is caught up, there'll still be some people. Down in hell. Huh? The dead in Christ is going to rise first. Those that are alive, but those that are still here, they're not going to be caught up immediately in there. What do you think of reading those people who are not saved? This still going to be down here. This still going to be down here. Huh? But now is the time. There's no guarantee when that happens huh, that you're going to have a chance to get saved. There's no guarantee. But this man should suffer me, huh? huh? Jesus. Following Jesus Christ is not easy. And he tells you that. But when you think about God, huh, is a spirit. Huh? God is a spirit. There are forces working against us that we can't see. Huh? But I want that force that I can't see working in me, which is Jesus Christ. And I don't worry about the force that I can't see that's trying to harm me. Huh? Huh? Because whatever God put me in, it must be for a purpose. Huh? Who can change somebody thinking about killing somebody? I don't have a gun in my hand since I got saved. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't have a gun, but I'm speaking for myself. Why? Because I know I have an anger management problem. And if I got a gun, I'm going to use it. So if I ain't got one, I can't use it. Some people that have a gun, they know how to use it. They're putting and threatening. Sometimes that works, but sometimes it don't. And when it don't work, you got to shoot. And I said to you today, ha ha, Christ is in us. That's where he resides. And if, if the Old Testament said, I want them to cut it short, and this is what you're going to shout on, I'm going to throw it out. And this, 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 is what, this is what I'm talking about when the Old Testament said, die. And Jesus Christ was crucified. When he died on that cross, we crucified. I'm seeing if I got this note right here, no clothes on this, what it says. Uh, uh, um, I think that's when Jesus Christ was crucified and the veil of the temple was ripped. And what happened? 
to those that was there, those that was dead. I know I got it in here someplace. Okay. Uh-huh. Okay. And, and that's in the gospel. It's definitely in the gospel. It says that uh, in Matthew 51 and 53. This is what makes me happy. St. Matthew 51 to 53. Now just think about it. That resurrection power. That resurrection, read, read, read that from the book. That resurrection, that this, this book keeps me when I'm by myself and a death should overtake me. And I really believe that that resurrection power, Jesus went to the cross. And when he was being crucified, what happened? It's in there. Because I made sure it was in there. And she read it. Madness. This, this, this will keep you strong in the Lord. Matthew 27 chapter. In 51, 53. Now listen to this. That, that, that. In the Old Testament, a relationship is important. You got a relationship with God every door. When you got a relationship with God, you be like him. Yeah. Anything can happen. Either both be God went back or God took me. I took God and he go. Now listen to this. Now I told him now. Listen now. It was split. In, it was split. From the top to the bottom. And the earth is shaking. And the rocks red. You know what the earth can do, right? It's shaking up things. And what happened? And the graves, listen to this. <laughs> just, just think about it. The graves were open.
We look to see what happened. If they don't walk all over you. Uh, Holy Ghost is in me, won't let me keep quiet. If I see something that right, and I know it's a sin, I'm gonna speak out. You just gotta, you just gotta turn me loose. You just gotta talk about me. But what is right is right. See something, say something that right. Two men believe it all. Say, well, I ain't want no pastor. I ain't gonna say that. Right, you better talk. And if you don't, that evil will take up over you. So stand your ground. You walk and hold it. Keep on living in the word. Keep on living in the word. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not rob. Thou shalt not kill. And all of these commands are still good for the day. Because what? You are making a difference. You are making a difference. That's got to eat every day. We turn around and go back to that old lifestyle. A lot of people would be in trouble. A lot of people would be in trouble. Because sin. Sin, 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 sin will kill you forever, burning into a lasting hell of fire. I can't tell them that, but I can see people committing suicide trying to get out of here, hoping to die and can't die. You was burning forever, that's why let's get them before they get to, to the grave. Let's get them before they get to the grave, huh? And what you want to do is just keep walking around. Walking right, as long as you stay in the way of God, God's going to stick to somebody who's not in the way. Uh, that's all you got to do. You may not know as much as it, that's what it is. But one thing you do know, huh? I'm saved. I have eternal life. I'm not, my spirit is not dead. You should know them by their what? By their fruit. Their life living. So, part two is going to be about that, the dead. Very today. But if you get it right, you told us, come follow me, you get it right. Because I'm going to come back and live. Behold, I will not leave you comfortless. I'm coming back. And I'm going to give you the power. But I will break down and knock down your door. Tell one church to what? If you hold us there, then you know it not. If you open up, I'll come in. What he was trying to say, that church was going dead spiritually. So God said, you open the door, I'll come in. I'll straighten out things. Straighten out in your home. Straighten out in your life. Huh? He's got to be here. Huh? And the devil can't work where God is at in his presence. He can't do it. Ain't no way he can do it. Because that home was not Trump last night. Trump was just acting like a fool going to home. Up on the one in speed up. Spirit tell me just hold your breath. Yeah. Hold your breath. Yeah. Back off. Let her go around. But I ain't gonna speed up. I took that down the road, I'm gonna have it now. But I ain't gonna speed up, and I'm breaking the law. Yeah. So I slow it down. I'm about to get off the road and let him go. But something tell me sitting in the hole, just hold your breath. And be shot by one of the rooms. And blow this road to the same time. Like the Lord's pain. He don't know what he don't know what. Got a man sitting in that truck that he just passed. He don't know that if I try to get revenge, I could have easily make it look like an accident happened by holding right down and stepping, slowing down and swerving over. A four wheeler to a, a big truck, you would you would have been caught in 911 trying to get a lawyer. Of a big truck this is. But I know better. I said, I don't know what's going on in that car. But the devil is working. But I know I did a good thing. I did a good thing. I pray that God would bless whoever's in that car, Lord Jesus Christ. Find that demon. Got to go home to a family, probably got children. Find uh, that demon. But as for me, I wouldn't take nothing for my journey right now. Yeah. I wouldn't take nothing. I ain't gonna trade with nobody. Whatever God called me to be, that's what I'm gonna be. Whatever God called you to be, that's what you're gonna be. Because that's what He knows. We are different, got different characters, huh? You and I may be different all the devil about certain things. Because what? We are different. We are, we, are, we are a singer. DNA in all of us. But what you might do, I won't do. 
And for you, it might not be a sin. Huh? But because if I know and let you persuade me to go along with you, it would be a sin for me. So what I'm going to close out here by saying this. Part two coming up. Let the dead bury the dead. You, 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 you are making a difference. So if there's somebody in here now, and I had brother Moses say something, and I do it in the one that was saying, he said, everybody is not going to be healed. But I tell you this, he's right. Paul had a thorn in the fresh. He prayed for it three times. But God told him what? My grace is sufficient. But in my strength, in my weakness, your strength is made perfect. Until God tell you that. Now get this, until God tell you that. Huh? You keep believing God for your leader. Until he tell you that. And, and you know when God tell you that. Huh? Huh? Because he got a work for you, no matter what you're going through, nobody else can do it. I'm actually standing on your feet now. Like if you sick in your body, I don't care what it is. And if God had to tell you, if God had to tell you, huh? Be real close. If God had to tell you, I don't care what man said, you will get healed. 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 Huh? I see it. You see it. Casting out the devil, the gospel being preached. Romans 10 9. Thou shalt suffer the mouth of the Lord Jesus Christ, be not. That God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And once you get saved, you're growing. You're waiting. Ask for what you will. But two of them will be able to say, He's a day out of the midst. Look at all of us up in here. Keep this heart of God. Touching the three. Uh, same thing, and it's going with it. So I'm going to tell everybody here, to my knowledge, I'm going to tell all those who go to the classic city. Now, I don't know. First, if you are not seen, you have not seen Jesus Christ through your life. God wants you to live for a purpose. So you're going to watch it by Facebook, whatever it is. If you are not seen, this will be your last hope. This will be the last time. To see any of the believers around you. Let go. You will spend eternity in hell. Ain't no getting out. Commit suicide. Thank you, child. But I want to say to those who have not received Jesus Christ, let the dead bear the dead. Some love them to make sure they get a good funeral. But you. God wants to live in you and use you. Stop the dead from dying. Stop the killing in your neighborhood. Not all of it, but it, it's a change taking place just because of you. Being dead in you. So I'm going to move out of there. I'm going to go to another place. I'm going to go to another place. But you're going to just stand. It's all over. So stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. For those who are not saying, Lord, then you come. You come. But remember, God, because of you, a lot of people are going to hell. So don't stop living what you live. That those who are sick in their bodies. I attend this meeting every three days. And I was sick in my body, so sick I couldn't go down. And I wouldn't tell. My supervisor. If I had to tell my supervisor, it would work against me. That means when you sit and can't work, then they can send to the headquarters. But we offered him a job. But he turned it down because he was sick. And I said, Lord, that truck has been paid for in the insurance. When you don't work, the insurance still got to be paid for. So I said, Lord, do something. I need a miracle. And you know what happened? The whole time I was sick, they never called me. They never called me. And when the Lord healed my body, they told me three nights out. 